And you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth from me one is to, who is to rule in Israel. Let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declare unto humankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a God righteous and so life, to the glory of our holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall go forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Rejoice in the 
Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The reading is from Micah. You, O Bethlehem of Aphrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth one for, for me, one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from the, of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be one of peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the Gospel according to Luke. In those days Mary set out and went with haste to a, to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Oh, mm-hmm. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. And do thy ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For all the Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy safety be known upon all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us by thy Spirit. We beseech thee, Almighty God, to purify our consciences by thy daily visitation, that when thy Son, our Lord, cometh, he may find in us a mansion prepared for himself. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So what kind of song is the Magnificat? That beautiful song of Mary that we heard just a few minutes ago, and that if we keep the office of evening prayer, we say every day at the going down of the sun. Is it a song of hope and comfort? Or is it a song of caution? It depends entirely on the place from which we're hearing it. Several of the verses come in couplets. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. So if we happen to find ourselves in a place of being impoverished, of being sick, of being downtrodden, this is clearly a song of hope. When the Savior comes, that condition will be elevated. If we happen to find ourselves in a place of power, a place of wealth, a place of comfort, then there's a word of caution in this song. Don't hold on to that too tightly. It doesn't last forever. I think it's fair to simplify it by saying that this is a song of reversal of fortunes. And it's hardly the only such scripture that we find in the Bible. Centuries earlier, another mother, Hannah, sang a song of similar character when she discovered in her womb the son she thought she would never have. And there are so many other places in the Bible that say, the coming of the Lord for whom we wait will be marked in our earthly lives 
by a certain reversal of fortune. Those who have it not good enough will have their condition elevated. Those who have it arguably a little too good may need to do with a little bit less. And this has to do not only with material things, but with immaterial as well. It's a reminder that if we are in a position of power, a position where we're used to being listened to and getting our way, that this is not an eternal state. It is fleeting. But also that if we're in a position of powerlessness, of having things done to us, that God has not forgotten. And the day will come when that state comes to an end. Now, at this point, you could rightly say, we don't really need sacred text to tell us this. We just need to look at history and at the ebb and flow of human condition. It's pretty obvious that this stuff is true. Empires rise, empires fall. Power is gained, power is lost. Wealth comes and goes. Health sometimes comes and goes. Why do we need scripture to tell us this? And my answer is because its location in scripture really has rather little to do with the physical reversal of fortunes. Those only provide the context. What matters most is what lies behind the context. See, this isn't simply God's way of saying human condition, human affairs, human life is going to be like one eternal sine wave. It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. Power and wealth simply get traded back and forth, and you have to stay that way forever. No, God is saying something quite different. God is saying beneath all that, behind all that, there is an incredible invitation. And I very intentionally use the word invitation. The grace of God is like the invitation to a lavish banquet. And sometimes the one doing the inviting can be pretty aggressive and vocal about it, but at the end of the day, the choice of whether or not to attend always lies in our laps. And God is saying in the midst of these reversals of fortune, there is an invitation. Now, for the ones being elevated, that invitation might seem a little obvious. If we, in one way or another, have had a condition that we find unsatisfactory, and suddenly we experience some relief and comfort, it's fairly easy to respond with joy, with gratitude, to see the hand of God in what's happened to us, to give thanks for it, and thus, hopefully, grow closer to the Lord. But if we're on the other side of it, if we're one of the ones who for a season felt wealthy, felt comforted, felt like nothing could assail us, and then all of a sudden there was a sliding and ebbing in that condition, it's a little bit harder to see God's gracious invitation in that. But these texts tell us clearly it is there just as much as it's there with the opposite. In this divine reversal of fortunes, in this situation where when the Lord comes, the mighty are cast down from their seats and the lowly are lifted up, that invitation of grace is there for both the mighty who are falling and the lowly who are being lifted up. And that really, my friends, is perhaps the perfect encapsulation of the message of this season of Advent. Because until the last day comes, it's not just four weeks out of the year. It's 
24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days out of the year, that the statement Jesus is coming, not only in the future by and by, but in the very present moment, is always true. And when Jesus is coming, he is bringing with him what we heard in today's Magnificat. He is bringing with him a shaking, a reversal of fortunes. But beneath that, he's bringing with him an invitation of grace. He's saying, yes, I know it's unsettling to have your fortunes reversed, but it's in that unsettled moment that your hearts are perhaps widest open to what I have to offer. It's not just a sine wave, it's an elevation of the spiritual condition of all humanity. So what do we need to do to accept that invitation? There's no formula for that. I can't give you a practical step-by-step -step guide. I can simply say it's a matter of the disposition of the heart. Are we in a place where we are resisting that reversal of fortune, where we're feeling guilty for it or cursing God for it? Are we fighting against it? Or are we in a place where we're saying, this is what it looks like when God enters the sphere of human affairs, and I welcome it. And in that open posture, I ask the question, O oh Lord, what is the invitation for me, for us, here and now? That, my friends, is the Advent question. Jesus is coming. When he comes, he's going to shake things up. Fortunes are going to reverse. And all we must do to experience that as a great elevation, not just for some, but for all, is to accept it, to welcome it, and to say, O oh Lord, I am yours. What is the opportunity here?
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's Church and the world, saying, Come to us, Christ, and set us free. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the, unite, the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in truth of <clears throat> thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Come to us, O Christ, and set us free. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Mark, our bishop, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we lift up to you this day the Church of the Province of Central Africa. In our Episcopal Diocese, we pray for the Holy Family Church in Half Moon Bay and St. John's Church in Oakland. In our local community, we pray for the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship in Livermore. Come to us, O Christ, and set us free. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. In our weekly cycle of prayer, we lift up to you these members of our congregation, for John and Hiroko, for Eric, Holly, Emerson, and Theodore, and for Roger and Suzanne, as well as those in military service, Aaron, Joey, Abigail, Valerie, Amber, Christopher, Taylor, and Drake. Come to us, O Christ, and set us free. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Gavin, our governor, Bob, our mayor, and all in assemblies or judicial roles at every level of government, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Come to us, O Christ, and set us free. Open, Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious heart in all thy works that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their sub substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Come to us, O Christ, and set us free. We most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Angela, Olivia, Becky, Brett M., Carol, Kathy, Dave and Mary, Doris, Dottie S., Aaron, Esteban, Helen, Helga, Janice and Bravo, Julia, Ben and Catherine, Kip, Lee, Linda, Lisa B., Laura, Marion, Marge B., Marsha R., Monty and Judy, Nick, Nina, Michael, Sandra and Henrietta, Michael E., 
Robert, Sally, Tamara S, Richard, Yvonne, the Purcell Ortstad family, Father Ron Calmer and family, the Sherman family, the Payne family, and the Thayer Moore families. And all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. At this time, you may add your own petitions for thanksgiving. Come to us, O Christ, and set us free. And we also bless thy holy name for all those disturbance departed in this life in thy faith and fear, especially Rosalie, Colin O, Corey C, Bernie S, Glennis P, Alex M, and Mark Beseeching thee, grant to them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so that to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Come to us, O Christ, and set us free. Grant these our prayers, O Father for Christ Jesus' sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen.